on the most important issue of our time, corruption in politics. I say most important because unless you solve that, you'll never get a balanced budget, you'll never get earmarks out of spending, and you'll never have a tax code that anybody can read. Now, has there been a response to the pledge that you sent Are out? Are you kidding me, None? Kate? Are you kidding me? I'm irrelevant. I haven't been in a debate. You see the, you see the game they play. Keep him out of the debate, whatever the rules have to be, keep him out. So he's irrelevant, and we don't have to answer his specific charges and pledges. These guys have signed a pledge to raise no new taxes. They've signed a pledge to veto Obamacare with no alternative. They sign pledges all the time. I haven't heard a single peep from a person running for president on the most important pledge they can make, to be owned by the American people, not by the special interest. Make that pledge. Now, also talking about the future of your campaign, um, you did ask Joe Lieberman to be a running mate. Who else are you considering now? Uh, Joe was kind of a symbolic person who I admire a great deal. Didn't even talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. But I see a need for almost like a unity ticket. I'm a Republican. And I would see a need for a woman or a man who's independent or even a conservative Democrat. And we put ourselves together and try to bring the country back together. I can't win without independents and conservative Democrats being part of my Republican ticket. If that's true, I ought to act that way when I pick a vice president. And that's what I'll do. An Erskine Bowles, or somebody like that, Simpson Bowles, he did great work. His own president ignored him. I don't ignore Erskine Bowles. Somebody like that with character and knowledge uh, who's a strong leader would be a great running mate. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you kind of mentioned bipartisanship when you originally uh, thought of Joe Lieberman. How yes. important is bipartisanship to Very you? Very important. I don't see one party changing America. We're in this together. I mean, I see all the elements of the budget being on the table, ethanol subsidies, oil subsidies, on and on I could go. Nobody gets protected. Everybody's on the table to be treated fairly. We've got a fiscal crisis we need to solve. And in that spirit, I as president will reach across party lines. I will single out congresswomen and men and give them praise when I address a joint session of Congress. You know, I have a unique history in politics. I was a Democrat for 20 years, and I've been a Republican for 20 years. And some Republicans say, well, that doesn't make you a real Republican. Well, do you have to be born Republican? Our party needs to grow. I've been a Republican for 20 years. I'm proud of being Republican, but I'm prouder of being an American, Kate. And I don't see these problems solved without two, now the problems I'm talking about are unemployment, debt that we can't repay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't see these problems being solved without two things being done, and I will do both of them. Number one, get rid of the special interest corrupt money. I will do that. And number two, reach out across party lines and bring a team made up of all Americans, not just from one party. In the Congress for eight years, I was a conservative Democrat. Mm -hmm. I worked with Ronald Reagan as close as any member of Congress did, and we passed a lot of good stuff. And I told my speaker, Tip O'Neill, I said, Tip, I'm an American here, and I'm going to work for the good of the country. And he said, well, nobody else does. I did. And we passed tax reform, we strengthened the military, we broke the back of the Soviet Union, and I am proud that I stood with our president to get it done. Now, you at least have one thing in common with your fellow Republican presidential candidates. You want to see President Obama out of office. Where exactly, if you can narrow it down, did he, has he gone wrong? Well, he hadn't done anything. Now, he's tried a few things, but he hadn't built a coalition to do it. But he's, he's dead in the water, and here's why. He, he's, he's owned by the special interest. 
that did bank reform. It didn't, it didn't change too big to fail, did it? Mm -hmm. It didn't do capital ratios, did it? I mean, it didn't reinstall Glass-Steagall, did it? There was no reform. And he goes and has a big fundraiser. President Obama promised hope and change. He's brought neither. I'm not as hopeful as I was for him four years ago, are you? I mean, he hasn't done anything. He's fallen right into the trap. Take the money and get reelected. Take the money and get reelected. Take the money and get reelected. That's the name of the game. No, it didn't. Serve one term, Mr. President, and do everything you can for America. Your legacy will be stronger for that. Now, WEBN is run out of Emerson College. Lastly, what would be your message to young voters? Uh, you're the key. That's why I went to Occupy. You're the key. You're the difference in this election. I think, uh, I think there are three kinds of voters in America. Republican, Democrat, they're about even. It's the independents who are going to make this election. And the young people from 30 years old down to 18 are the most independent voters in the country. I'm a granddad. I know the value of youth. I need young people in my administration. I need young people on the streets. I need young people on my website, buddyromer.com. If I catch fire, it's going to be because of young people wouldn't take a no from business as usual. You don't know this yet, Kate, but you'll discover it. There are a lot of people in America, there's some people in America who are doing real well. And they don't want change. And they're in control. I'm after them. I will stand up to the establishment. I need young people to stand with. Thanks so much, buddy. This is WEBN News. I'm Kate Spala.